Would the narrative about the 2023 Washington Commanders be any different if Jacoby Brissett were the expected starting quarterback and not Sam Howell? The answer to that coming up on today's episode of Locked On Commanders. Your daily podcast on the Washington Commanders. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Welcome to your Tuesday episode of Locked On Commanders, your daily podcast covering the Washington Commanders, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you so much for making Locked On Commanders your first listen of the day every day. And don't forget that you can subscribe for free on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts. If you're on YouTube, please throw a like down on the video. It'll help YouTube send this video to other Commanders fans just like yourself. And if you want to continue the conversation that we're about to have here today with me after the episode is done, just head to joinsubtext.com slash locked on commanders and you can text me directly your host david harrison on twitter at d harrison 82 credential member of the media and washington commanders beat reporter for commander country a part of sports illustrated's fan nation and i'm here with you every monday through friday along with our everydayers and as always i want to show my everydayers some appreciation for your continued support for the program on today's episode of locked on commanders we're going to discuss comparisons and how the media views washington in 2023 with a different quarterback lens attached. And this is coming thanks to our mailbag because I got a question via subtext from our uh, subtexter, Keith, who asked, what would the commander's expectations from the media be with Jacoby, a quarterback, after his performance with Cleveland last season? And that was a very interesting question. I mean, when I sat down to answer it, I kind of realized that I can give you my opinion, and I'm going to give you my opinion, but I don't speak for the media, right? I'm not I'm not everybody in. And the the thing about the media landscape is it's very interesting because you have differing levels and echelons of media and access and exposures and all of those things. And it's kind of almost like a nurture versus nature sports discussion, right? How much do you see or how, or what is your opinion based off of from where you are in the landscape of sports? So, what I did is I took Keith's question uh and I formulated a question from the question, right? And I basically sent this to a whole bunch of media members uh, that I know. Some of the media members are in the DMV area. Some of them are not. Some of them are working or have worked for NFL teams or are members of NFL media. Now, because of the wide spread of people that I sent this question to, uh, and because of how many answers I got, the answers are going to be shared anonymously. Okay, I'm not going to tell you uh, who all of the answers are from just because there are some people in positions that we don't, we don't want to protect that, right? So it's similar to kind of the executive GM coach scout articles uh, that you see every offseason or post draft and, and all that stuff, right? If you want honesty, sometimes you have to grant anonymity. And that's what we did here. So we get some honest answers. And folks, we got some honest answers. I'm going to give you all the categories that I kind of sorted these answers into uh, and then a percentage of the respondents in the categories right up front. So I sent this out. To all these people, and I'm not gonna lie, guys, I really was not planning on doing a full episode on this, but I got so many responses, it pretty much turned into a full episode. And when we sent this thing out, uh, here are the percentages here zero percent of the people who responded to this survey or whatever you want to call it, this question, uh, what uh, whether what what the narrative or what the v, the view of the Washington Commanders would be and how it would change with Jacoby Brissett if, if he was a starting quarterback, zero percent thought that Washington would be worse. None of them, not a single one said the commanders would be a worse team than where they are right now. 44% said they thought that Jacoby Brissett would actually make Washington better. 25% said there would be no change whatsoever in their opinion. Washington uh, being better, but Sam Howell still being the right quarterback made up 31% of the population. I thought that was a kind of an interesting turn uh, of events here with, with this whole uh, survey. So those are kind of the numbers, right? But that doesn't tell you what the context is. So that's people I asked for their input. I'm going to tell you specifically what each group of these people had to say. And there are some pretty, like I said, pretty straightforward answers. Some of them you may not like a whole lot because they talk about your favorite franchise, right? But I am going to share those. Before I share those thoughts with you, though, I'm going to share my thoughts on topic. So the question, right, specifically, what would the expectations be for me as a media member if the Washington Commanders were to start Jacoby Brissett? Well, I think bottom line, no matter who the quarterback is, this team's expectations needs to be playoffs. I mean, I think if you watch the Washington Commanders from last year, most of us would agree this was a team capable of making the playoffs last year. Uh, the games that they lost, the games that cost them uh, the chance of the playoffs, whether it was play, whether it was coaching, whether it was 
officials in the New York Giants game, the second one, uh, for example, whatever it was, most of these are self-inflicted wounds. And even the officiating one, it's not the other team necessarily beating you. It's you or your circumstances beating yourself again, whether it's quarterback play, whether it's coaching decisions, right? So if that's the case from last year, theoretically this year, you've only gotten better as an organization. The defense, I think, has gotten better, younger, smarter, uh, and more aggressive. I think the offense is going to take a step forward. I think Sam Howell has the ability to play either at the threshold we saw last year for quarterback or better. So playoffs has to be the expectations regardless. And if Jacob Brissett is in there, veteran, you've been around the block, no reason that you should crumble under the pressure. Same thing. It, it's got to be playoffs or bust. But with the offense, I would be talking about, so this is where the narrative would change for me. I would be talking about more of the passing game than I am so much of the run heavy type of game that we've been talking about this offseason OTA mini camp period, right? And but now the narrative on Sam Howell specifically. So this is kind of going away from the team aspect of it. The narrative on Sam Howell changes dramatically because and I've kind of talked about this, right? Every day, as you'll remember, when CBS Sports said, you know, Sam Howell is a complete unknown. Sam Howell is not a complete unknown to Washington. He's a complete unknown to CBS Sports. He's somewhat of an unknown to me because I'm not in the meeting rooms. I'm not at practice when he's getting his reps, right? So I know what I know, but I don't know everything. CBS Sports knows even less than what I know. So they know more. They saw, they saw him every day of his rookie season in every meeting, at every practice, on the sideline. They know Sam Howell as much as anybody in the NFL can know him. The people in the building right now, Ron Rivera specifically, know Sam Howell. If they were not okay with moving forward to him as a starting quarterback in the job situation they're in right now, which we're going to talk more about here in just a little bit, that would speak volumes to me about Sam Howell, kind of like the way Baker Mayfield's arrival to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers speaks volumes to me about Kyle Trask. So the narrative on Sam would be completely different here uh, if Jacoby Brissett were the incumbent, or not, not even incumbent, but were the presumed starter. Uh, the narrative of the quarterback future in Washington would change dramatically because Jacoby Brissett, even if he's a stable veteran presence, he's a little long in the tooth for an NFL quarterback, so he can't be the quote-unquote long-term future. So now you're talking about is it Drake May? Is it Caleb Williams? Is it somebody else? Is Jacoby too good to even let Washington get one of these top quarterbacks? But right now, we're not even talking about these top quarterbacks. We, local DMV Commanders fans, right? ESPN, CBS Sports, some of those guys, they are talking about future uh, young quarterbacks. But locally, uh, the, the future young quarterbacks are, are focused on Sam Howell uh, and those discussions. And like some are going to bring up later, the last point I'll make is, how are you selling this to Josh Harris? How are you going to sell veteran quarterback Jacoby Brissett to Josh Harris as a future for why you should be stay if you're Martin Mayhew and Ron Rivera? It's a much tougher sell than a young quarterback is. So how much did my expectations change of the 2023 Washington Commanders as a whole? If it's Jacoby and not Sam, not much, to be honest with you. I still expect you to challenge for a playoff spot. I still, I'm still going to say that you should be in the playoffs because you have the talent to do it. It's just a matter of execution. And then if you don't execute, that's a totally different you know, story. But the expectations of the Washington Commanders for me would not change. So I would be in the no change group, which was not the minority, which was not the majority. So again, that's the group that I find myself in here at the beginning of this conversation is in the no change group. That being said, I'm not the only one that weighed in on this. So I'm going to share some of the answers that we got to this question coming up next on today's episode of Locked On Commanders, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And before I share those comments with you, I want to share some updated World Series odds with you so that you can take your first swing at betting Major League Baseball on FanDuel and get 10 times your first bet amount in bonus bets up to $200. Just $20. If you bet 20 bucks, you will land $200 in bonus bets, whether you win or lose. That's $200 that you can then spend betting on everything from money lines to over-unders to who you think will hit the first home run, all on an app that is safe, secure, and super easy to use. Plus, when you win, you can get paid instantly. It's probably no surprise to DMV sports fans, but the Washington Nationals are tied with the Kansas City Royals, Oakland Athletics, and Colorado Rockies for the worst odds to win the World Series at plus 100,000. Meanwhile, the Baltimore Orioles just up the street are looking a little bit better at plus 2,000, meaning a $100 bet would make you $2,000 if the Orioles pull off a World Series win. Now, the favorites are the Atlanta Braves currently who sit at plus 330, followed by the Los Angeles Dodgers at plus 480. No matter what game you're watching or wager you want to make, there's no better place to bet on Major League Baseball than FanDuel, America's number one sports book. So sign up today and visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get up to $200 back in bonus bets. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on FanDuel official partner of Major League Baseball. 
Today's conversation here on Locked On Commanders Podcast. Thanks again for making Locked On Commanders your first listen today and every day and every day. Make sure you come back tomorrow and the rest of the week as we continue our march towards training camp. But before that, Thursday is the big day. Hopefully, the expectations that the owners, the NFL owners, will come together and vote on the sale of the Washington Commanders from Dan Snyder to Josh Harris and the expectations that it will go through. And that when I'm talking to you Friday morning, it will be under a new day breaking for the Washington Commanders. Make sure you're coming back for all of that. And then, of course, next week we've got training camp kicking up. So that's exciting. Football is right around the corner. And that's always great. Of course, if you want to send in a question for future mailbag episodes, drop them in the YouTube comments. Email them to me at lockedoncommanders at gmail.com. Or like Keith did for this question that sparked an entire stinking episode, you can text me by going to joinsubtext.com slash Locked on commanders and subtexters, you always get priority. So when you ask a question like this one, you just take up the whole dang show. For this episode, inspired by that question from Keith via subtext, you've seen the numbers. I've already shown you the numbers, but let's get some of the insight behind the data. Again, the comments are all coming from media members from differing levels of media, differing atmospheres, differing exposures to the Washington commanders, some of them on the national scale, some of them within the NFL family uh, itself, some of them from the local beat, and some of them. Uh, just friends and people that I've gotten to know over the years. So I sent Keith's question to a bunch of those people, uh, and here is kind of what I got, right? So again, no fans here, no players, no coaches, just reporters. That was a question. What would the media landscape look like? And some of the answers honestly kind of stayed in the win-loss portion, right? That's kind of, we asked what the expectations would be. They took that as basically, boom, win-loss. Are you better? Are you worse? Uh, Would you code reset? Kind of a simplistic way of looking at it, but That's a way that's a good way to look at it as well. Some of them did take the big picture look, uh, as you will see here moving forward. So I'm going to share some of their thoughts with you now. Let's start with the minority group here and let's start with those who thought that Washington's outlook is no different, regardless of who the quarterback is. And of course, the no change group, which is one of the groups that that I was partially in, uh, 25 percent of the of this of the of the respondents said that they were in the no change group. Uh, One person said, quote, I personally would still view them as an unserious team angling at Caleb Williams slash choose your fave 2024 guy. Rivera will sneak a few wins they shouldn't get, and I don't think you look past them week to week, but I can't really see them finding a place on the NFC stage. So, like I said, some pointed answers here, some blunt answers, and we've got more uh, coming up as well. So buckle up. Here's another no change guy. Quote, I'd say they'd have a decent proven backup at starter versus an unproven eventual backup. Honestly, think the NFC East will be too crowded either way. So that's just a couple of samples from the no change group. And as you see, the no change group, uh, what I said is a little bit different, right? What I said is the expectations around the franchise are going to be the same. What a lot of the no change people who responded had to say was basically they don't really have a lot of respect for this team, which if you're looking at the national landscape as it is anyway, we've talked about this on this episode every day as we've had this conversation, what they're seeing. Uh, is is what they're seeing from out there, right? So the themes kind of from the from the no change uh, group, the central themes here, Washington's a low rate team. So choosing a quarterback really to them is kind of a trivial issue uh, at this point in time. Quarterback of the future, not on the roster right now, or even in the NFL for the most part, uh, a lot of these people uh, believe. And Jacoby, they look at Jacoby as a career backup. They look at Sam Howell as a true fifth round pick. We've talked about it here. The Washington Commanders had a much higher grade than a fifth round pick. We've talked about the reasons that they went ahead, didn't take him as early as they wanted to because of the presence of Carson Wentz and that ego. But a lot of people are looking at Sam Howell as a fifth round pick because he should be a fifth round pick uh, and he belonged there. And if they're correct, only two fifth round quarterbacks have started more than 37 games in their careers in the Super Bowl era. One of those, Steve Grogan, who was drafted in the fifth round in 1975 by New England. The other one, Mark Brunel, who was drafted in 1993 by the Green Bay Packers. but He's most well known for his time in Jacksonville. Of course, he also spent three seasons in Washington. So that's a little bit of a sample size from the no change group. Now let's took look at the group, the second most popular answer, who think that even if Jacoby Brissett is the better quarterback today, this year, Sam Howell is still the right answer for the franchise. And we'll start with this quote uh, from one of the respondents that if Jacoby Brissett were to become the starting quarterback of the Washington Commanders, it would be, quote, a complete failure. Rivera and company are basically hitching their wagon to Howell in 2023. If he fails, then that staff and front office will be looking for new jobs in 2024. 
end quote. Another respondent said, quote, higher floor, lower ceiling by the numbers. JB, Jacoby Brissett, is an elevated Taylor Heineke. Maybe it's worth a win or two in Vegas, but unless Howell is a disaster, any media advocating for JB is missing the bigger point, in my opinion. Rivera regime can't sell Harris on a vet journeyman. Howell's risk slash reward is central. End quote. Finally, from this group, the Brissett is better, but Howell is the right answer. My perception is that the excitement might go down a bit. Let's be honest here. Sam Howell beat the Cowboys. That matters to the commander's fan base. There's some excitement about the potential of Sam Howell. There's a reason Ron Rivera drafted him, and I think it's because in the event Carson Wentz didn't work, they had someone else. I think we all want to see what he can do. Jacoby is good too, but I do think the anticipation and excitement simmers if he's the starter and not Sam. All right, so again, that's some comments from some of the folks who weighed in, whose answers basically sat in on the Jacoby Brissett. Could be some of them didn't even say that Jacoby Brissett was necessarily better, but really just hitting on the fact that Sam Howell, regardless of talent level at the current time, is the right answer for the franchise for a myriad uh, of reasons. And some of the central themes from this group uh, circle around Ron Rivera's future implications and the fact that they need to be able to sell this future plan, what they have going on with this roster to the new ownership that's about to come in again, hopefully as early uh, as Thursday. And I think that is a big part of this story. The higher floor recurring theme came through a lot of responses. And I can't show you all the responses on this episode because we would be here for well over an hour. Like you said, guys, the uh, I sent this to a whole lot of people not expecting all of them to get back. And I will tell you that most of them got back. And actually, most of them got back pretty quickly. There are a lot of opinions uh, on this topic, more opinions than I actually expected. So again, Keith, great, great question, man. You really hit the nail on the head on this one. Um, but high floor, low ceiling, all that stuff, very, very common theme. And we're actually going to come back to that theme here uh, in just a little bit. And then young is fun, right? You kind of have this rebirth connection. That's kind of what I thought about when, when this topic came up. Uh, in so many comments, is the youth movement, right? Howell right now is the fifth youngest quarterback to play for the Washington franchise. In the history of the Washington franchise, Howell is the fifth youngest quarterback to play a game for this franchise. I know that's kind of an obscure stat, right? Shout out to uh, Pro Football Reference. Uh, he's also the youngest quarterback to start in the Dan Snyder era by 35 days. He's 35 days younger, or was 35 days younger, uh, making his first start than Dwayne Haskins was when he made his first start. Uh, start. Speaking of obscure stats, here's an obscure, obscure one. Howell turns 23 the day before week two game, the week two game in Denver. If he starts that game in Denver and the rest of the regular season, he will have played the most games by a 23 year old quarterback in the history of this franchise. That's an obscure stat. Yes, I went and looked it up. I don't know, guys. It's, it's what I do. It's why I get paid to do this. I guess I'm 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 a glutton for trying to find really really uh, insane numbers. But hopefully you enjoy that number. I thought it was fun. I thought it was interesting. Um, so Sam Howell could, you know, be a record setter of sorts, be the 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 23 year old quarterback to have played the most games for Washington uh, in the franchise's history. I know some quarterbacks like that's not really fair. Like what, if you turn 23 at the end of the season or or, you know, midway through the season, like it's really going to be hard for you to play that many games. But it is what it is. So, uh, again, but it just kind of, again, reconnects that youth movement. Right there. There's a turning of the page feeling with this franchise right now with the sale going on uh, with, you know, with even with like guys like Carson Wentz, who's only for here for a year. But you've had this veteran movement. You've had Alex Smith. We've had Ryan Fitzpatrick. And we had Carson Wentz. Everybody was kind of tired of seeing the road warrior veteran come in and get handed the keys to the car, really without even seemingly getting the opportunity or having the opportunity uh, to to really fully earn it. And, and I can't I don't go back as far as Alex Smith covering this team. So, you know, that might be a little bit different. But Ryan Fitzpatrick and Carson Wentz, certainly, I think that fatigue set in with those watching this team from afar and from up close. You guys in FedEx Field. I mean, I was there. Uh, I was there hearing the Taylor Heineke chants while Carson Wentz was was trying to play a game. That was brutal, guys. That was, that was pretty brutal. But, you know, f uh, fans short for fanatic for a reason. That's what it is. So those are some more comments. But the majority of the respondents still think that Washington would be better, even if just by a little bit with Jacoby Brissett. We're going to hear from them coming up next on today's episode of Locked On Commanders. <laughs> Up today's episode of Locked On Commanders. 44% of the media members that I surveyed believe the Washington Commanders would be better off with Jacob Brissett over Sam Howell, even if just by a little bit. And, and I mean that because one person wrote in and said, Very little. Jacob Brissett makes the Washington Commanders better very, by just a very little bit. Uh, this person said, I would argue Howell provides a higher ceiling for the team. There you go again. 
because he's more of an unknown. Sure, it's a riskier floor, but we know who Brissett is. He's never had a winning record any year in the National Football League. A great backup, in my opinion. So there's someone who is saying, take, you know, Jacoby Brissett makes you better. We know that he makes you better. How provides a higher ceiling? But, you know, do you want the risk or do you want uh, the reward in the ceiling potentially? But again, Jacoby Brissett makes you uh, the better quarterback of the two. Another person wrote in said, quote, I would think a bit more highly of them, again, if they started Jacoby Brissett, but it wouldn't move the needle in a huge way. So again, only a little. This person continued, I like Brissett to a degree and hardly expect Howell to be good at all. So that would be an upgrade for me. I think McLaurin and Dotson is actually a really good wide receiver combo and a competent passer could help them a lot. That said, I don't really like their backfield and I think their defense is overrated. Oh, they are playing a division in which the Eagles and Cowboys are clearly better teams and the Giants might be too, end quote. So again, told you some pointed, some pointed answers here uh, from some folks when uh, presented with this question. We've got some more quotes uh, here from, again, this is the group that thinks that Kobe Brissett is, a upgrade, is an upgrade over Sam Howell, even if it's uh, a minute upgrade. Uh, this person said, quote, from the outside looking in, Jacoby Brissett brings you a higher floor than Sam Howell does because you don't, you won't win in spite of him where Sam Howell you might have to. Being a young quarterback, Brissett has done this at multiple locations where he's able to come in and at least give you a good floor. Tyrod Taylor-esque, Tyrod Taylor-esque, I would say, and Jacoby Brissett with that defense. Is that a wild card team? Potentially. So this person thinks that Jacoby Brissett with the commander's defense could be a wild card team, whereas the other person thinks that the defense is overrated. We will see uh, when the season comes. Another one, quote, I really like Washington's roster and actually think they could be more dangerous than New York if QB isn't a disaster. I don't think it sways too much with Howell versus Brissett, but I actually think Brissett is better. And finally, quote, it would give me the perception that the team isn't sold on Howell and with new leadership coming in, we'll look at other options next year. For this year, Brissett is the better option, in my opinion. He's won games before and has beaten this team before when he played them. That quote, that last one I just read, comes from someone who covers a team that this team is playing this year. And that's I actually reached out to that person specifically because I said, you know what? Let me find out a non-divisional opponent uh, opinion. And this is so this again, this this is a media member who covers the team on the commander schedule this year, not in the division. And they say that for this year, Brissett is a better option uh, because he's beaten this person's team that they cover uh, before when he's played them and he's seen it happen uh, in real life. So, again, some some options or some some opinions rather there that Jacoby Brissett is just simply the better option because he's just the better option. Um, and, you know, whether or not uh, future of Ron Rivera, future of Martin Mayhew are taken in consideration there or not. Basically, it's a win now type of motif. And, and that's certainly one way to look at football. One more answer that I want to kind of share with you guys here. Uh, probably my favorite answer of all of them that I got, to be quite honest with you. Uh, and here's here's what they had to say. Quote, in short, there is an outlook to be had with Brissett based on what he has done with Howell. There's nothing but projection based on what he could do to expand. A lot of folks may say things like Brissett probably has a higher floor and how will the higher ceiling, but ceilings don't really exist if we've never seen a guy play a considerable amount of meaningful snaps. So for me, the idea that Brissett has a six or so game floor means that I could say that I expect them to win at least six games, likely more with him as a presumed starter, assuming he starts the entire season with Howell, All I could say is basically anything can happen betting on what the team feels is upside, but that's not really a projection. So that, to me, again, was another interesting answer uh, because, you know, to the other person said that we we watched Sam Howell beat the Dallas Cowboys. That win, even though it's one game, means something to the Commanders fans, to the people who cover the team. Like, that game is, is more important than just your average uh, game, right? It's like your college rivalry game and, and all that stuff. So I think there's something to be said there as well. But again, when you talk ceiling, where are we measuring the ceiling? How are we measuring measuring the ceiling right so the central theme from the majority to me seems to be fairly simple percent is better today even if it might just because be because we don't know what howell brings right it's it's what you know it's like it's like schrodinger's cat if you have a cat in your arms and schrodinger's cat in the box which one is, is more likely to be alive the one that you're holding right so that's kind of i don't know if that made any sense but it made sense to me so what is the right answer right we got all these we got all these numbers we got all these these survey answers and we got all these quotes and some, you know, some people throw it, like I said, I went outside of the DMV too. So, so a lot of these people don't cover the commanders and don't have any type of affinity 
or affection for the commanders. And you saw that in some of the answers. So what's the right answer? Well, here's what I'm going to tell you. The right answer really just depends on your football theology, to be quite honestly. If, if, you, if you think one way about football, one way about team building, that is how you're going to answer this question. Whatever your belief is on how a team should be built and should be operated, that's how you're going to answer this question. I think those who say that Ron Rivera can't save his job with a journeyman career backup are correct. I don't think that's going to save his job uh, this year. Those who say that Howell is a relative unknown as a day-to-day -day starting quarterback, I think you're right. I think you're 100% correct there. But we're never going to know how high Howell's ceiling is or Washington's ceiling is with him unless he's on the field. Like so many have already said, we know what Brissett is. Again, relatively speaking, right? So you put Howell out there and you see how high he can reach. The Washington Commanders would most likely be better in the first four to six games with a veteran like Brissett, to be completely honest with you. Like the first four to six games, you put your Jacoby Brissett out there, you're likely to do better than you will with Sam Howell just because the experience level is so vastly different. But veterans never become veterans without experience. Like, you don't, you know, Ryan Griffin was the third string quarterback in Tampa Bay for like a decade, and nobody ever looked at him as this veteran leader type quarterback. He was a quarterback that just never had any experience. The only way to get experience is to get on the field and to play. So every veteran backup has to have a first game. Jacoby Brissett had a first game, had a first start, had the first chance to prove where his ceiling could be. Coach Rivera can only keep his job if the future looks bright and if it looks like the ceiling is high arcing. That's the only way he's going to do this, and it's only going to do it if that ceiling goes on for a few years. So even if you bring Jacoby Brissett in here, you make the playoffs. If you're Josh Harrison, you're you're looking at this coaching staff, you're looking at this roster, your quarterback is on a clock, and it is running out just as soon as you step in the door. That's not going to get it done. So the right answer to me is Sam Howell, as far as I see it. The holistic perception change, if it were Brissett, would be the next season is the real new beginning for the Washington Commanders, but you want that new beginning this year. Ron Rivera wants that new beginning this year. Josh Harris is getting that new beginning this year. That train is coming. So Sam Howell needs to be the conductor for Ron Rivera to keep him on the train because it's Howell. If it's Howell, this year could be that new beginning that everybody's been wanting, and you can feel the excitement for it starting to build as we get closer to training camp. Maybe they don't make the playoffs, but maybe they look pretty stinking good and you see something building for the future. We will see, and the process to find out what we're going to see is about to get underway Next week, another great mailbag episode. Uh, really, just a, a question episode, right? One question answered out of the mailbag. So we still have other questions in the mailbag. If you want to add to them, drop your questions in the YouTube comments. Hit me on Twitter. Email me at LockedOnCommanders at gmail.com or send your questions directly via subtext. As always, I want to thank you so much for making Locked On Commanders your first listen of the day, every day and every day. I thank you for coming through on a consistent basis like you do. Remember, if you want to continue this conversation or send me your future mailbag questions, Go to joinsubtext.com slash locked on commanders and text me right from your handy dandy mobile phone. Thank you so much for making me a part of your day, part of your football routine. If you have anything else you want to speak about with me, hit me up on Twitter as well at dharrison82. Until we speak again, please be safe, be kind, and I'll see you next time for another episode of Locked On Commanders, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. <laughs> <laughs> .